yani ukitega kama ndo wana ukitega ile nini huku sikiweka vitu samaki ya kule ndio unasika tu hii nini plastic You know we have single use plastics. We have interesting things, bottles, milk bags, um, sandals, shoes, name it like you can see them all over. This finally ends up in the lake and the water Kisumu water intake is only 300 meters from here. Uh, it's really really terrible at this point. These people don't have any information about what plastics can do to the lake and to their life. Out of sight, out of mind. No singing. <laughs> We want to make our next journey today, this morning, and we wish we succeed this journey. The water state is described as moderate instead of calm, so it's not going to be really calm like some of the days that the sailing team have had before. The wind is easterly. It means that we sh I hope that we'll be able to sail for large parts of tomorrow on flip floppy. What is the flip floppy? Flip flops? Flippy floppy? Floppy disk? It's a well designed collection of rubbish. The world's first 100% recycled plastic DAO inspired by the traditional Kenyan dhows that took fishermen, sailors, spices, and pirates across the Indian Ocean not so long ago. It takes a little shift in perspective to know what trash could really mean. Is it trash or treasure? Gold, even? In four weeks this past March, this floating treasure of trash sailed around Lake Victoria, the source of the Nile River, and the second largest freshwater lake in the world. It stopped in three East African countries surrounding the lake. Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. We're ready to go. This is the moment we've been waiting for, for the last uh, two years of planning. And uh, Flip Floppy is about to set sail on the first expedition around Lake Victoria. One man went to preach the gospel. One man went to preach. One man went to pick the boat rope. One man went to pick. One man went to pick a boat rope. One man went to pick. One man went to pick a boat rope. This so-called piece of trash brought together locals, politicians, environmental activists, sculptors, musicians, journalists, queens, and kings, doers of all sorts. One grand meeting after another under the name of Revolution Beat Pollution. This is Ben Morrison, founder of the Flip Floppy Project. He's warming up before we set sail, or he had too much coffee. Uh, the idea of building a boat out of recycled plastic came to me about five years ago in Lamu in Kenya. Um, so the the idea came from my head, um, but it was only an idea. It became a reality when I met Captain Ali Skanda in Lamu. He's a, a boat builder. And uh, then uh, shortly after I met Depesh Babari, who's a campaigner, an, activ uh, an activist, I suppose you could say. And between the three of us, the idea became a reality. I think it's easy to forget amongst the um, Ra 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 of trying to get onto the boat on time and who's got this and who's got that. I think it's easy to forget why we're here. Um, uh, you know, we, it's not actually about 
uh, sailing around the lake. It's about why we're sailing around the lake. Here's why there needs to be a why. The costs of running an expedition like this are not trivial, and most of the team was there on a volunteer basis. The Wynnum Gulf where we are here, and it's gonna, you can see here. <laughs> not to mention, the flip floppy relies mainly on fossil fuels, which plastic is also made of. Winds can only help when conditions line up. But its engine had to keep running so it could arrive at the campaign events on time. Even such environmental movements can't escape our global system of transport, let alone the rest of us. But what are the costs of the status quo? What make us to go and volunteer our time to this project is we see a big problem is coming. We are causing this problem. It's nobody else apart from we are the one involving in this mess. So we saw now is the time we have to find the solution. And we have the solution because we are the one making this problem. So we can do the solution if we are ready. We give you a pledge. My friend. My friend. Since the 1950s, global plastic production has skyrocketed. Plastic breaks down into microplastics, tiny pieces of plastic less than 5 millimeters wide. You can see here that it's a lot of colorful little bits, so that's for sure a microplastic. I don't think that's something natural. Microplastics don't just disappear. They get smaller and smaller, making them more likely to enter body tissue. Some evidence shows that microplastics absorb toxins and then release them when digested by animals. But no one truly knows how harmful they are to humans because research is lacking. So we need to collaborate, all of us. It's not be because of the flip floppy team. The flip flop is just a starting point, but this is a, it should be a united uh, agenda. It should be everybody because we are all affected today. I believe each and every one of us has microplastic in our body. I've been walking, I've only been here for like 10 days and I've walked past and seen streams that are going directly into the lake that are full of plastic. And after having a conversation today, we realized that a lot of the plastic is sinking down, so we don't see it. And that is sort of like um, us blinding ourselves from the problem because we don't see the plastic that we're using. But it's all really now in the fish that we're eating, so we really won't see it until it's in our bodies. There is not much research about microplastics in Lake Victoria either, which is surprising given that it's the source of one of the most polluted rivers in the world, the Nile. Uh, yeah, there are several issues why microplastic, uh, you know, you know, like Victoria in Africa, in fresh water, haven't been studied. The first is uh, expertise. We were actually, uh, we have been lacking expertise in that area. Remember, microplastic just came recently. The new is an emerging area of study, and uh, many prominent people in, in research have already specified the area of concentration. Bahati Mayoma is a microplastics researcher from Tanzania. On the Flip Floppy expedition, he collected data for the first surface to deep water analysis of microplastics in Lake Victoria. For the first time now, we are going to report data which are collected uh, at a very specific time of the year and uh, covering the three countries. So for me, this was a very nice achievement that we have even very few variations from other environmental parameters which could have affected the validity of the data if we were to sample from different seasons of the year. I 
think we were together you saw having a boat to move around uh, three countries it's a lot of resources needed a lot of time volunteerism a lot of risk It's okay, but wind is, you know, you know, you know, yeah, you know, you're the experts, eh? yes, slowly, slowly. so we hide ourselves on this uh, lagoon here. Kevin, yeah. uh, We need to hide this stone. So we stay on, this is the last lagoon. If we don't stop here, then we'll be just in the middle of the, the lake and it's sometimes risky. We don't know how strong is the, the, the wind and the rain. Not everybody can take such a, a big responsibility of sacrifice to, to do this study. So that could be one, but we, we hope that with time and the, the more we put data out, uh, probably we are going to attract many young scientists. If you have to be a prize, I would not send you any spa. Actually, I was a little scientist, but I worked with the crew. The crew were very friendly. We have people who have traveled uh, from different continents, I would say, especially this time where the pandemic, the corona pandemic, is still a problem, but people did not bother too much. They wanted actually to, to contribute their know how in addressing this problem. So I think. Uh, FIFROP is, is a platform which could be replicated elsewhere in Africa and in the, in the other part of the world that people with different interests can work together to address this problem. They might not address on spot, but the message which who has been uh, carried by the FIFROP team is enough to completely help change the society. And this is what I would say it was a very nice experience that people so how recycling, for example, uh, can be very useful in transforming what we what is perceived as waste to a very useful product. What we are planning at the moment, I think, is to work together with other scientists. I'm not the only one. Even from the science science perspective, I was representing my other colleagues. Four and a half, yeah. What are you measuring? I have no idea. <laughs> it's the depth of the string. So we know all these are different depths, right? I'm at four and a half. This is my job. But from here? What? Yeah, yeah, no, I started there. <laughs> oh, just from here? Oh, shit. There are two methods which I'm using. The first one is what we call uh, towing or trawling. I'm using equipment called Manta Trow. And uh, this manta troll is actually helping me to get the surface uh, water sample. Uh, every day we do sampling, we prepare sampling equipment. And uh, what we see here uh, is a water sampler which is uh, designed specifically for collecting uh, water from different depths. And uh, thanks to Simon who prepared all this equipment. Okay, four and a half. Four and a half. This is five and a half? Okay, let's take it to the oh, filter. No, 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 no. You have another You're filter? Three and, three and a half. I thought I was three and a half. Sorry, four and a half. Three and a half. Let's go this for four. Sorry. We managed to collect data from various places, remote areas, uh, which uh, will give us a clear indication of the extent of plastic pollution. I haven't analyzed the data, uh, the samples that are seen the, in the laboratory, but I think. We are, we are going to have something very interesting for the first time, which is almost representative of the uh, plastic pollution like Victoria. And this could be a model to be used in other lakes in Africa. There was a study which was conducted in 2015 where we found plastic in fish. Uh, was one of the major pillar or major platform for the government to take action. And in 2019, they decided to ban single-use plastic in Tanzania and the other steps are coming. So you see science is very important, it's very needed in that one. For 
us to have a sustainable solution, it has to cut your cross. We need science so that we can make an informed decision based on the fact. But we also need, as actors, like environmental activists, we need people, volunteers, we need a lot of different actors, media, to advocate the issue of plastic. A lot of the times, um, the information or the sort of like initiatives we have are focused um, on human beings, you know, on ordinary people, for example, like beach cleanups. And to be very honest, these are the great initiatives, but I'm very disillusioned with them. I don't believe in beach cleanups because if you're having a beach cleanup, but Coca-Cola is still producing like plastic bottles every single day, no matter how many times you clean the beach, the problem is not going to go. So I think now for me in 2021, what the plastic revolution means is holding corporations responsible and you know, completely stopping to produce plastic. I had a meeting once with uh, representatives of METL and um, they are buying plastic bottles at 300 shillings, but that's not worth the damage that they're causing. The, sh the solution for us is finding ways uh, for plastic or recycling and things like that to make money for people because I feel like that is the only incentive that will make people, you know, do it so um, strictly as it needs to be done. Um, I think also the solution starts really now at the younger generations um, and you know teaching them from a very young age of the dangers that they're facing because it's their future. Corporations are never going to stop because they're making money from it. But if the government comes in and says that either you have to have some sort of corporate social responsibility where you invest this amount into recycling, into community initiatives, into cleanups, because they have already created a mess. And I think uh, a very important step that we need to see either this year or in the coming years is a complete stop to all non-essential single-use plastics. Why are we advancing ourselves into a mess, into a problem, into pollution, into something which is toxic, something which is harming ourselves? And we are saying that we are advanced, we are ahead of other people behind us. So we can use our natural things, we can go, we can go back to, to the nature things, we have a lot of trees, a lot of nature things. Let us protect our environment. Let us protect our world as uh, we don't do this and it will be a big blame to our next generation because we are the one involving today. We are different leaders here and if you are not a leader but I'm a leader to my family. So we have to guide our people, we have to guide our next generation, where are they going? Where are they supposed to do? So for this, thank you so much. Katarina will finish all the problem. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes when the body is capsizing and uh, every yeah. crew has one bucket yeah. and it's like <laughs> in five minutes yeah. the body is out. Wow. Because when you delay the waves bring you down. Yeah. So you have to be quick, 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 quick when the wave comes, at least it gets half. Yeah. Mm. One more quick, 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 and the other wave comes, it just stops there. <laughs> what? Yeah, wow. <laughs> Fifteen. No, five. <laughs> <laughs> Every minute.
for an hour, we have to put it out, but within the next hour it should also be movable. So when that's happening, we will just depart and make our way around. Because at, at this point it doesn't really make much sense to go to sleep anymore. So we'll just head off and sleep on the way. <laughs> We need an early start anyway. <laughs> so tired, huh? Me choca sana. Akuna kunala. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? We're in Lamu. We're in Lamu. You've actually made it. Of course, what do you mean? Of course we have. Where did you think we were, Ben? Still in Tanzania? <laughs> Oh, going back to Salam. No, we had an early start. Kuna <laughs> kulala. <laughs> no. I was calling in particular to speak to Mick, Katarina, and Ali. Yes. And I wanted just to, to congratulate you and thank you for um, for um, bringing Flip Floppy home. Thank you. Yes. It's our pleasure. Thank our you. pleasure, man. Thank you.